Hey friends, welcome back to Hey Pastor, Where is God? I am Glenn Poplowski and we've got an awesome, awesome message for you today. We're going to cover a series of things that I've talked about in the past and to my uh, right, your left, my right, we've covered a topical uh, process for the last month in the Get series. It's Get Right, Get Smart, and Get Truth. And you can find that in our archives right below us. And that's out of 1 John. And it talks about the fathers in the church, the young men or young women in the church, and it talks about the children and what the children are supposed to be taught from the fathers. And these are the things that we're dealing with today. There are a lot of fathers, a lot of things that are being taught from the church platforms today that are keeping the little children in the babe stage, even below the little children stage. We've got many men of God, supposedly men of God, that are, uh, have big degrees and have big uh, pieces of paper up on the wall. And all this information and all this knowledge that is possessed within inside of a person, and they, they, they have it, they're holding on to it, and they have it to distribute it. But we've, what we've done is we've gotten into a lot of smoke and mirrors and entertainment, and we're keeping kids, we're keeping children, basically, in the Lord, at a kindergarten stage or a preschool stage. We're keeping them at a low level and it's almost like we've dumbed it down. We're following what our government is doing and dumbing everything down and it's like keep it simple and keeping simple doesn't get you free. Keeping things simple does not allow your congregation to grow. And this is why this is important for us to go through this. So you can look at this at a latter time, but what we want to do is we want to insert something called Judge Not. Years ago, when I was first starting out in ministry, back oh, about 25 years ago, John 3.16 was our headline presentation. You know, God so loved the world and, and he sent his only son. And what we have to understand is that still is paramount. But what we've done today is we've taken a scripture out of Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 actually, and we've misquoted it. And we've put it in a in a, a signet, like a ring, put it out there and we say this is our stamp of approval from the church and that stamp of approval is our, is our title today, Judge Not. In fact, it's Judge Not, lest you be judged. Now, we've had a number of experiences with this when we're trying to correct someone or bring someone into a little bit deeper uh, form of Christianity, a little bit higher level coming from preschooler to kindergarten and going from first, second, third grade, and up through uh, your regular grammar school into high school and then into college. Hopefully we're going to get people at a level where they can understand that you've accomplished something on this earth and you're gathering up crowns up in heaven. You're gathering treasures here that you can set forth in the treasury up in heaven instead of putting them here and trying to store things away where the robber can take it, the rust can eat it, the moth can destroy it. God says for us to learn and to apply what we've learned, get ourselves into a position where we can take what we see, we can take what we believe. The scripture is truth, friends. Scripture is truth. Bob said this last week, he was filling in for me, and he did a, he did a teaching called Bit by the Holy Ghost. Hilarious. You've got to watch this thing. It's his testimony in there. And he even says that he takes, we have to take the word of God for truth. You know, anytime we can take the Word of God and we can look at it as 100% literal, we can do that. We can read it for literal, but when it, it starts speaking of using analogies and it starts talking about different, uh, different things that may be a little bit, uh, little bit confusing to the normal read if you're reading it as literal, then we look at it as an analogy. Then. And we, there's many different uh, ways to process that, but for the most part, we have to agree on one thing that the Word of God is 100% true. And it's how we understand it, how the Spirit of God begins to bring this to the surface and get us on fire for Him. You're going to see the fire of God pour out of Bob on, uh, when you watch this uh, video. And I'm just so excited because, friends, we are raising up men and women of God in Holy Fire International Church. And we're bringing them up to the surface to where they can minister into your hearts wherever you are on this planet. Because I don't think this is going into outer space. You are on planet Earth and you're listening to this by YouTube. So hallelujah to that. Everybody say amen. 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 All right. Now I want you to, to turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And we're going to try to cover some good ground. I talked about this 
uh, on Sunday, and everyone was saying, "Oh, Pastor Glenn, you got to put that on. You got to put that on YouTube." So here we go with Judge Not, and we're going to allow the YouTube viewers. We're going to allow you to understand something, and we're going to start. Where are we at, Bob? Verse uh, 14. Verse 14. We're going to start with verse 14, and we're going to cover some ground the way Paul, the apostle, desired for us to cover it, and. You have to understand the Corinthian church at this time is a messed up church. And I really believe this is the church of today. This is the church. If we can take an example of the mess that we're in, it's not the mess that's out there that's coming into our church. It's the mess that's inside the church. Let's make that clear. It's not about the people that are out and coming into the church. We've always had those problems. We had those problems 6,000 years ago. Uh, you know, when... when Basically, Adam and Eve were kicked out of the church, kicked out of the Garden of Eden, and had to then be a part of that cursed earth and toil and labor when the earth was supposed to put forth its fruit freely and very easily put forth its fruit. And you know, I, I look at this and I say this because my wife just gave birth to our, our third baby just this past week, and Bob was teaching, and I'm in the hospital, and my wife is like, ah, you know, and she's... He's pushing that baby finally came out. And that's part of that's part of what happened in the garden, friends. You know, it's part of the labor that we have to bring forth new life. And so we're laboring. Our church, Holy Fire International Church, hey Pastor, where is God? Is laboring to bring truth into your life. We want to get it out there. And we're not going to be the happiest, uh, you're not people may not be the happiest campers listening, but we're going to be happy because we're at least getting this out there in a way that can. Uh, be productive into your life. And hopefully you'll gain something from this and you'll be able to look at this with truth and not send me hate letters. But, you know, if you send me love letters, make sure it's to Glenn and Brooke. You know, make sure that it, it comes bolt to both of us. But, hey friends, we are excited for what Jesus is doing. It's a blast being here. We're casting out devils. We're seeing the sick healed. We're seeing God do miracles again. If you get right with God, you start getting right you get smart you get truth go through this series below me to here and you'll be able to see that the lord is desiring for the little children to grow up children in the lord to grow up not to stay where you're at to get to the young adult stage where you begin to fight the devils you begin to get into the trials into the temptations and you begin to succeed through those things because the lord says he will not put more on you than you can handle so friends before you can become a father before you can truly become a teacher on stage and begin to deliver powerful messages and get it down into the hearts of people to where you can truly bring the little children up to the young adult stage read you got to read it for yourself out of first john it will blow your mind and it'll show you why when bob says he was bit by the holy ghost you can understand that you got fire that's coming out of people that's, that, that are here within Chicago. People are burning for Christ. They're like, give me the truth. I'm hungering. I'm thirsting. Give it to me, Lord. Give it to me. And we need more pastors out there that are able to preach the truth. More pastors. More people from the stage that are able to get the truth out there and not worry about their paychecks and how many people are going to leave because the truth hurts. We're going to cover a topic today called Judge Not lest you be judged. We're going to find out what that means. And we're going to look at the way Paul brings it home. And let's go with uh, verse 14. Go ahead, Bob. Verse 14, I do not write these things shaming you, but warning you as my beloved children. Mm -hmm. For if you have myriads of teachers in Christ, yet not many fathers, for I fathered you in Christ Jesus through the gospel, then I urge you, be imitators of me. 17. Because of this I sent Timothy to you, who is my beloved child and faithful in the Lord, who will remind you of my ways in Christ, even as I teach everywhere in every church. Okay, check this out. What Paul is saying here, he's saying there's some things that I've got to send to you. The Corinthian church was a, 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 a Christian church, but it was kind of messed up. You had a lot of different teachings, a lot of different things that are happening with inside of this organization. And friends, yes, the church is an organization. It's an organism also. It's a living organism. It's a living. The, the, the Bible is the living truth. The living stones we are called to be. And when we are alive, we should be pouring forth salvation. We should be showing forth the happiness and the joy that's inside of our spirit. And we should be bubbling up. And understanding that Jesus not only loves us, but he has an expectation for us. And that expectation is to be busy here on earth. Not busy populating the numbers and the seats in the church, but busy witnessing truth for Jesus Christ. 
That's what we need to see again. That's what we're going to be praying for you pastors that are out there. Pastors that are coming out of seeker sensitive and coming out of the emergent system. I want to hear from you. Give me a call. 708-251-0007. Give me a call. I want to hear from you. I want to talk to you. Now, what Paul is saying here, he says, we've got a lot of teachers, but we don't have a lot of fathers. We've got a lot of teachers, but we don't have a lot of fathers. Remember, I had up here on 1 John, you'll have to go back into our archives here and look at this again in the Get series. But we've got a lot of people who want to teach. A lot of talking heads, in other words. Oh, Pastor, I'm called to be in the ministry. Oh, yeah? Talk to me in 10 years. Let's, fi let's find out if you're still able to handle it. Why? Because you're not going to be loved as the world loves people. You're not going to be loved. You're going to be looked at the same way Jesus was looked at. You're going to be treated the same way Paul is talking about being treated here because Paul is going to bring home a message. He's going to ram it out there, and it's like a, a, a ramrod going down the barrel of a cannon. And then when it gets fired out there, it comes out with an explosion. And you're going to notice that when you begin to get the truth into your heart, the enemy in your life will be destroyed when that explosion hits his camp. This is where it's at. This is about freedom, friends. This is about getting heresy out of your life and the things that you heard talked about, judge not lest you be judged. So in other words, what people are saying is, hey, if I'm living in for if I'm fornicating or I'm living in sin, if I'm doing this or that, you know, and, and you, you know, a Christian comes up to you and says, hey, brother, you know, there's some things that I can see in your life. You know, can we talk about that? Are you really supposed to be projecting this as a Christian? Do you really need to examine your life and, and should we talk about some things and what people say judge not lest you be judged brother so in other words talk to the hand I don't want to hear it that's what that's what that means and we're gonna pick we're gonna pull this apart and we're gonna pick at it and we're gonna put it right back together again and you're gonna see what the truth in this means but we have to we have to go not only from Matthew chapter 7 but we have to look in 1 Corinthians because Paul outlines this and expresses it really in detail it covers almost two and a half chapters Okay, Verse 18, as to my not coming to you now, some were puffed up, but if the Lord wills, I will come to you shortly, and I will not know the word of those who have been puffed up, but the power. Whoa, he says, there's a difference between being puffed versus power. Now, puffed, you can say, well, you know, if our... our Church system must be working because, woo, look how big it is. Look at, look at the size of this thing. Look where it's growing. Look how many people are here. Look how many people are gracing us with our presence and coming in the doors and, and setting up shop here. Well, it's not about being puffed up. It's the power. Do you have power in your church? Is the power of God? Is the fire of the Holy Spirit there? Are you seeing demons being cast out or the sick being healed? Do you have altar calls where people are running up and saying, help me, somebody tell me how to get saved? Help me to get free from my sin. Or do we have, do we have programs that we send them to? Do we have a, an, another angle, another alleyway that we can put them down? In other words, we're, we're getting too big. I've got, a, I've got a, a, a teaching called, When the Shepherd Turns Rancher, the Sheep Go Moo. Because when the Shepherd turns Rancher, the Sheep are looked at as cattle, cows, cattle. And you're, you're going to treat it differently. You know, a shepherd treats the sheep differently than a rancher would teach his cattle. You know, the cattle are looked at as, it's just beef, man, that's money. Coming in, coming out. Coming in the gate, coming out of the gate. But a true shepherd looks at those sheep and it, it's, it's, it's more personal. There's a personalized setting there. And these are going to be things that are going to help you if you're in one of these churches. You can, hopefully you'll be able to see some things. Do you, want to be a, do you want to be a cow? you want to moo? Or do you want to be a, you want to be a sheep? Because it's the sheep that are led to still waters. The sheep are led by the, the uh, uh, pastor or by the, by the good shepherd. And this is what Jesus desires to portray us. He wants truth coming once again. And this is why Paul is hammering it and knocking it home. He's beginning to let us see. He wants us to see. And he wants to correct a church, a Christian church now, the Corinthian church. He's sending a correction. Let's follow through what he's saying. Now he's got Timothy. He's telling him, I'm sending you Timothy, and I'm there with you in spirit right now, but I've heard these things are happening, and now I'm sending correction. What's Paul doing? He's judging. Let's go. go Middle of 19, and I will not know the word of those who have been puffed up, but the power. Verse 20, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. What do you desire? Shall I come to you with a rod, 
or in love and a spirit of meekness. Chapter 5, verse 1. Everywhere it is heard that fornication is among you. Okay, check it out here. What was that? Meekness? In love and a spirit of meekness. Okay, what do you want? Do you want him to come to you with a rod or a love and a spirit of meekness? Now, this can be taken different ways. He is actually coming to them in love. But Paul is not a pup. He's not a little, little kitty cat, not a pussy cat. Paul is a roaring lion nailing it where it needs to be done. So there's a time where the rod needs to be distributed in the church. And there's a time where you come in love and meekness, but when there needs to be correction, you need to bring the correction. Not, not to sit there and say, okay, well, we don't, I love our pastor. I love going to our church. Oh, man, my pastor is such a great guy. Doesn't talk about sin, doesn't talk about hell, doesn't talk about judgment. He doesn't talk about uh, fornication. He doesn't talk about, you understand what I'm saying? That doesn't make a great pastor. And oh, he's just so loving, and all the people from all over the community and the country come to our church because our pastor is just so forgiving and he just lets everything go. Friends, if you die in your sin, you calling yourself a Christian and you die in your sin, you're going to stand before a holy, awesome, almighty God. And when your pastor tells you that God just understands, I wouldn't want to be him at that time. And I wouldn't want to be you. This is why we need these messages. I'm coming to you in love and meekness, but I'm also coming to you with this. Chapter 5, verse 1, Every word is heard that fornication is among you, and such fornication which is not named among the heathen. Oh, wait a minute. We just need to operate in love. Come on, right? This is love. We all need to love. So we need to just excuse that because they're having a hard time. They're having some trouble, maybe in their family, some family issues, and we don't talk about fornicating. Most, church, most churches today coming out of seminary are even taught not to talk about that. You don't want to talk about sin anymore. You just want to talk about the love, the love of Jesus, the love of Christ. Well, that's one of the pillars, one of the foundations. You can't take one little pillar and build an entire house on a pillar. The foundations have to be all over. These piers have to be all over. They put, they put a deck on the back of my house uh, back a couple weeks ago, and there were uh, eight of these piers put out for an 18 by 16 foot deck. You got eight of these things out there. Can you imagine just putting one pier out there, build an entire deck on one pier four foot deep? What's going to happen? Crack. You stand over here, it'll break. And eventually that weight is going to be too heavy just to operate on that one pier or that one pillar. This is what we've done in the church. We've operated in the love thing and we're afraid to offend anybody. And as we've gotten to the point where we're afraid to offend anyone, we're, doing, we're no good. We've got to get to the point where we're telling truth again. So let's read it the way it says, and we'll find out what he says. Go ahead, Bob. Every word is heard that fornication is among you, and such fornication which is not named among the heathen. So oh, hold on a second. We can't do that because Paul, you know, one pastor says, well, you know what? Paul was a pretty good gossiper. Just read that again. Everywhere it is heard. That fornication is among you. So in other words, Paul, you have no right because you're listening to gossip. So everywhere it's been heard that this is a church that allows fornication. This is a church that allows sin to take place. So Paul, you know what? you got to get back to being a little bit easier. You're too heavy-handed on these people. This is what I heard recently as Paul was a bit heavy-handed in saying this. And, and he's, been, he's been accused by the pastors of today. 2014, pastors are saying that this is a heavy-handed Paul. This is a Paul that's not really in his right mind. This is a Paul that's coming against this church, and this church is this is, was a church that was messed up. Hey, friends, the church is messed up today. There's no difference here. This is our church in 2014, and Paul is saying it's been heard, it's well spoken of that there's fornication. This isn't gossip. This is truth. Paul is going to try to settle this issue. He's going to bring this to the leadership of the church. He's writing this letter so they can change. They can deal with this thing. Not pass it by and put a blinder over it and say, hey, it doesn't exist. We're going to, we want to see miracles in our church. I told you before in, in, our, in our archives down here that there are two revivals. There's one revival that we are in right now. And there's one that is coming. The one that we're in right now is earthly, it's devilish, it's sensual, it's, it's, it's made of man. And everyone is flocking to it. Everyone loves it. Everyone is going because everyone is accepted. 
And then there's another revival that's coming, and it's being prepared. And when that one comes, that revival is going to come in power. It's going to come in might and strength. And the presence of the Holy Spirit is going to be there to convict. Friends, I'm going to tell you something, and, and hear this clearly. You can write to me, and you can look this up yourself. I've looked it up. There is nowhere in Scripture, and there's nowhere in history, anywhere in biblical history, in our country or in the countries around the earth that I could find where revival took place where there was no conviction of sin. Look, you won't find it. You will not find a place where God showed up and excused the sin of the people that were in the congregation. Every time the Spirit of God shows up, He's hard. He comes with the rod. rod erase it. He comes with the rod. He comes in love, but He comes with the rod. And he, and he hammers it. And God is looking for people again. Pastors, don't leave your pulpits if you're tired of being you know, put down by this new way of doing church. If you're thinking that you've got to go along with the program, don't, don't do it. Don't do what I did. Hang in there. Call me. I'll encourage you. Hold on because revival is coming. We have seen a revival where the devil's going to be put back in his place. Where demons and his minions are going to have to bow to the name of Jesus Christ again. The Lord Jesus Christ. we got a salvation message that's out there without lordship. And it's an apostate Christianity. Let me say it again. Apostate Christianity. That means it's not of God. It seems right, but it is not of God. And the devil will always throw something out there. He knows the move of God is coming. And he'll always throw something out there. He'll throw a curveball out there, and we're swinging our bats. And we're like, woo, look at that. We just put one over the fence. Guess what? You're play you're all the players are on the same team. You might be playing baseball, but you're not playing against anybody. You're playing in the devil's courts, the devil's ball, the devil's bat, the devil's ball game, and all the devil's players. You might think, wow, my team is winning. Your team and the, the, the side that you're playing on, if you're doing it according to the new way of doing church, you're all on the same team. I heard this uh, uh, a while ago about our politicians. Now, <clears throat> am, I am I Democrat or am I Republican? I, I tell you what, we need to fire them all. How's that? Y'all yes. need to be fired because you're all playing the same game. We need to start off again. We need God in our, in our White House. We need Jesus Christ. We need, we need our Savior, who's the Lord Jesus Christ, in the White House again. Yes. And make it white again. You know, it's been painted all different colors. You know? We're politically correct. And what we've done is our pastors have seen this entitlement and all this political correctness that politically correct brings people. And this is this false revival here. It brings a lot of people, and it fills up the seats. But it keeps people in the babe stage. They may have said this prayer, but they have no idea what they said. Because there's no power, there's no authority, there's no, there's no declaration of freedom. And if the pastor comes up and says, oh, you got demons, you got some problems with this, you got problems with that, you got habits, you have this, that's why we got Jesus. That's apostate Christianity. And, and we're, we're seeing it. But hang on, friends. Pastors, hold on to your pulpits. Get out of that mess and hold on to your pulpits because really, real revival is coming. The true revival, the revival that follows the pattern because the enemy will set up camp first and then God will come in and he will prove it. What's happening is you've got, a, you've, got a, you've got a battleground that's taking place. You've got the church itself. And you have, you have the uh, Holy Spirit. He's got his side. And then you got man. He's got the rest of it. The Lord is allowing, is He's allowing this to get tighter and tighter. This is our testing for the church. You might say, wow, the Holy Spirit, that's all He's got is just this little splotch out of this amount to work with. Check this out. Check this out. You guys need a different color. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. He's got only this little spot. You might say, "Well, oh, wow, he's you know, God, you're not doing too good, Jesus. You only got one percent, and now you got ninety-nine percent of feel good. Ninety-nine percent of feel good going on here. 
And what the Lord is doing is he's allowing that marker to be moved this direction. And as history repeats itself, history will follow. God's going to get all the way down to here. And then this is going to be his pure side. This is what he's going to use. So if you're being purified and you're hearing, you're hearing teachings about judge not on how to really live for Christ instead of playing the game for Christ, because you could be emotionally involved, but your spirit is still dormant. You never truly got saved. And what's happening is what God is doing is he's allowing this to, to open up. And once this takes place, once these floodgates open up, what the Lord is going to do is, I'm not sure, I, I, don't, I, I can't say it exactly. I feel in my spirit there's going to be a, a showdown between the prophets of Baal and Elijah because there are people that are getting tired. I'm one of them. I'm getting tired. Listen, I want to know the truth, Lord. Is this is the, is the Holy Spirit here? Is he here? Or is the Holy Spirit here according to the Bible? The Bible says the Holy Spirit is in this percentage right here. Man says the Holy Spirit. Man says the Holy Spirit is here. Because look at the size. There's a story, uh, Alex was over the other day, and we were looking at Gideon and Gideon's army. You guys remember that teaching about Gideon? He had all these people, and, and everyone's like, okay, you know, we got to go to war. Are we going to war? You know, we're gonna, we, we got to fight this battle. Okay, there are people that didn't want to be there. God got rid of those. Kept separating, kept making it smaller. You notice that? God's not into the big numbers. He actually likes when the odds are in his favor, where you truly have to believe in something. Yeah. You have to believe that the Bible is true. Literal when you can read it for literal and as an analogy or, or figurative when you read it figuratively. But nevertheless, it's true. You can't look at it and say it's contradicted. Oh, you know, the Bible contradicts itself. We can't do this and you can't do this. And who really can know? Get out of a church like that if your pastor's saying that. Get out. Run! Why? Because this is where you're at. You're in this type of church. And this is what God is doing. He's allowing this to squeeze. And he's looking for a remnant. He's looking for truth. And I'm telling you, friends, I can't wait. I am waiting and waiting and waiting. When that well cap pops off, and all of a sudden the gush of God's presence and the Spirit of God hits, we're going to see revival hit America like never before. And he's going to spread it out all over the place. And he's going to prove to these seeker boys that this isn't real. This is a different Holy Spirit. Notice the question mark. There are pastors up there that say today they got the fog machines and they got the lights, the camera, everything. And the pastor stands up and say, Woo, we just sang a song that was uh, Lady Gaga, but we changed the words. But, ah, oh, Lady Gaga song. And then we ended with Amazing Grace. And, ooh, can you feel the Spirit? Yeah, there's a Spirit you can feel, all right. But I'll tell you what, it ain't Him. Not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not in that nonsense. Let me say that again. The Holy Spirit is not in that nonsense. Say it one more time in case you want to edit it out. The Holy Spirit is not in that nonsense. Pastors, wake up! Time to wake up. What's happening is there's a great divide. There's a separation. It's happened in history. It's happened throughout the ages. Study the revivals. Study the great awakenings. Study the great moves of God that have, that have taken place not only in our country, but in Europe and, and across this great earth. There is a repentance and a get right with God. And these pastors that stand up and say, you know what, I'm not into this get right stuff and you need to clean your act up. Get out of those churches. Those churches are absent of the Holy Spirit. And you know who rules there? It's this dude right here. It's called the flesh. And it's man. You don't like it so far? Call me, 708-251-0007. Or you can write to me at glenn 2 ends at heypastorwhereisgod.com. I love you, and I want you to go to heaven. I love you like crazy. Paul, is he preaching in the spirit of love and meekness, or is he preaching with the rod? Hey, Glenn is preaching on both. 
I'm giving you them both. So I'm giving you the rod on one cheek and I give you with the spirit of love on the other one. How's that? But we're going to give you all the pillars of the church and make sure all the pillars. I'll teach on that one day. All the pillars of the church. That on the gate this judge not lest you be judged thing too. Yo, hold on a second. Let, let, you got, we got we got the time here. Man, this, I, I'm excited. Are you guys excited? Okay, here we go. Chapter seven of Matthew. Don't turn there. Just li listen up here. Judge not let that judge not that ye may not be judged. Okay, we got that up there already. Now look at verse two. Everybody, the heretics, stop with that. Seeker guys, stop with that. Now listen to this. Verse two says, "For with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged." And what matter you measure, you shall be met with. It shall be measured to you again. Read the whole thing. Don't quote one verse and pull that verse and quote it out of context. Judge not lest you be judged doesn't mean I don't want to hear it. Judge not lest you be judged means that whatever measure you're judging, so you're better off not judging if you're not willing to have the word of God as a mirror, the double-edged sword, come back to you. Read Hebrews. The word of God is a double-edged sword. It goes out and it pierces even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joint and marrow and it comes back and it pierces you again. So in other words, don't be a hypocrite. Preach the word of God, preach the truth and get the truth out there and let that truth not only nail the person that you're bringing it to, and I'm not talking about the world, we're going to look at that in just a second, but the Christians. Christians are supposed to keep Christians in check. Well, Pastor Glenn, where is that in the Bible? I'm glad you asked. Bob, go ahead. <laughs> And each in such fornication which is not named among the heathen, so as one to have his father's wife. Verse 2. And you are puffed up, and have not rather mourned, that he that did this deed might be taken from your midst. For as being absent in body... Oh, wait, 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 wait. He that... Mm -hmm. This guy here, let me write him again. Okay, we can't write this word in the big churches, remember this? Everyone say it. For... Fornication. Right? Can't write it in the church because we have to ignore that. Woo, God understands. We're not the Holy Spirit, so the Holy Spirit has to work on those guys because they're fornicating. So we're, you know what that is? That's a lie and it's an excuse. A lot of pastors, a lot of excuses going on. One pastor told me, he said, hey, I, got, I got people all over the place. I put them in, I put them in ministry. I put them in, I put them in leadership positions at our church because perhaps they'll get saved. Perhaps someday God will get a hold of them and they'll understand that the Bible... They need to stop this sin. No, you don't put them in leadership positions. That's right. you, need to, you need to know those who labor among you. Pastors, please read your Bible. Call me, 708-251-0007, and I will help you. I will help you to understand. Because the presence of God is so, is so strong, so strong on our congregation right now. And we, if you want to come in, you want to visit us at Holy Fire International Church, you are welcome. But just like Bob said last week, please don't come and grace us with your presence if you want to remain in this. You want the devil cast out of you. You want demons cast out of you. You want to be set free and not sent into some program. Then you come visit us. And we'll give you some grace period, but we'll teach you the word of God with love and meekness. And then we'll take the rod and we'll beat that devil out of you. How's that? I'm not beating you. I'm just trying to get you to understand some stuff. You know, I want to beat the devil out of you, man. I'd be saying hallelujah to that. There's somebody that actually cares for me than to ship me off to some program that doesn't work anyway. It's quiet in here. I'm preaching good. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Verse 2, and you, have, and you are puffed up, and have not rather mourned, that he that did this deed might be taken from your midst. Taken from your midst. Not put him into a program. Taken from your midst. Get him out of the church. Now, why? Here's an here's a here's an I don't know how much we're going to get on today, friends, but I'm just going to keep going. The Spirit of God is here. The real Holy Spirit. Remember the little line? That's where he's at. He's in preaching like this, not in the big congregation where we. I don't see anything. I don't hear anything. I don't say anything. Now we don't. We're not doing the three monkeys. Okay. We're teaching the Word of God. We're getting you in there. Not see no you know, evil. Hear no evil. Speak no evil. We're going to speak truth. We're going to drive it home where it needs to be driven. Get it into your ears, get it into your heart. You got two ears, you got two eyes. Listen and see more and speak less. So I'm, the less I'm speaking, the less, the, the less I have to get into your heart, but you need to listen to it, friends. Watch this, watch this over and over again. Prove me wrong. I beg you, please try to prove me wrong. 
Take the word of God and you show me where I am deviating from it. Because I'm showing you where your pastors are deviating from this. I'm showing you where the church has gone today. Pastors, I'm showing you that you need to get back on track again. Don't worry about the paycheck. God will give you a part-time job till everybody comes back again. Well, God starts blessing the church again. Don't fall into this. We'll mix it. It's, it's the Gulf oil spill, friends. Pastors, it's a Gulf oil spill. It's just a clean-up mess on the shore. You're going to have a disaster on your hands. Please get out of it. There's a new way of doing churches of apostate. It's apostate Christianity. Okay, what were, what were we saying again? Uh, fornication, taken from your midst. Yeah, we were in verse 2. And you are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he that did this deed might be taken from okay, your midst. Okay, you see the fornication. You should, be, you should have sorrow or mourn. You should be mourning because of this. Because it's in your midst. And instead, you're puffed up. Probably because your church is growing so big. And if I get rid of this guy, whose mama, whose mama is bringing, who's a, who's a, who's a very wealthy uh, business person in the church, if I get rid of this guy, his mama's going to leave, and everybody else is going to see because this guy's, a, this guy's a hilarious, this guy's a clown, this guy's a, this guy's the class clown. Okay? This guy is fun. He's fun to be around. And you might say, well, Pastor Glenn, this is the extreme. You have to know the extreme of what was going on. And of course, Paul had to, had to deal with this. But friends, I'm telling you right now, with the laws that are being passed in America, if we're afraid to deal with the simple things on fornication, we're going to allow the same type of sin this guy was committing in our church, and then we're going to have other sins that we're going to allow into the church. What will happen if bestiality, someone says, you never know what's going to happen in America. What if that when someone says, hey, this is my, this is my German shepherd here is my new wife. We're going to bring her into the church. I want you to marry her and me together. But really think about that. We have slipped so far already in America. We've given rights to everything except for truth. And what Paul is doing is he's holding on to it and said, you know, instead of you guys being sorrowful or mourning and you guys are puffed up, you should be taking this guy and getting him out of the church. Now, here's a big thing. This is what I wanted to cover. You guys still with me? Yes. Okay, watch this. You take him from your midst. Let me show you why. When you have a church, which the Corinthian church was this. Follow this, friends. You have a church building. Okay? And we'll do a little uh, thing on there. The steeple, and you open the doors, and here's all the people. Here's all the people. Okay, you got uh, you got people that are in this church. Okay, now when there are people that are in this church, and these people are praying, you have prayer warriors, which a church is supposed to be, and you have fasting, you have holiness. You have holiness. You have uh, you have sanctification. You have repentance that's constantly taking place. On and on, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right? This is a church that's moving for God. This is a church that Paul is talking about. This is expected. But instead. What we're doing is we want to please those who are outside instead of taking care of those that are inside. And you say it again. What we want to do, the new church system teaches us this. This is apostate Christianity. We want to please those seekers that are outside instead of taking care, as a true shepherd, taking care of the sheep inside. This is what these guys need. And this is what they're supposed to get. And what we've done is we want to be politically correct, and we want to, take, we want to bring these people into the church and mix them with the sheep. And they call that evangelism. Bring the sin into the church. And don't tell them all those cuss words. Like sin, repentance, the devil. Repentance, uh, unforgiveness, get rid of, get the, get the junk out of your life. Uh, healing, miracles, telling them that they need deliverance. 
We're not, we're, we're not gonna tell them out there because it's, gonna, it's not gonna please those from the outside. They might freak them out. A little too heavy handed, Pastor Glenn. So what's, what's happening is these people suffer and this begins to go down the toilet. So what we have here, instead of trying to please those that are outside, why aren't we busy taking care of these that are inside, letting the Holy Spirit, which is expected, letting the Holy Spirit be in charge because Jesus, Jesus Christ, I gotta leave that up there. Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit will be there if Jesus Christ is Lord. Now, if you're afraid that Jesus Christ is going to be Lord and it's going to shake some stuff up and people are going to leave your church, then you're going to be afraid to kick the guy in the butt and get him out of your church when he's fornicating. Does this make sense? Yes. Yes. Now, this is what is expected. The repentance, prayer, fasting, holiness, sanctification, etc., etc., communion with the God, communion with, with friends, with this is true love. This is the love side right here. And this is being this is being flushed. So instead of taking care of the people on the inside, what we're doing is we're wanting more people so we can be the fastest growing church in Cook County. And what we're doing is we're bringing the people in. We're bringing as many people. I'm not just picking on Cook County, Will County. I'm picking on Chicago in general. I'm picking on everybody. We say, well, why are you picking on our pastor? Well, when you start preaching the truth, I'll stop picking on you. Amen. Amen. 708-251-0007. Call me. Now, judge not lest you be judged, Pastor Glenn. Oh, yeah? Let's find out what Paul has to say about this. The problem here, what we're dealing with, get ready, Bob. The problem that we're dealing with, if this guy is, if you let this, if you let this guy come into the church, okay, I, I erase it, fornicate. Yes. You let this guy come into the church, and you let him stay in this church, and you let him stay in this sin, what happens is everybody else begins to turn red. And the Spirit of God, now, you can't have the Spirit of God because there may only be a few people that are still really right. You guys catching this? Yep. That are still really right in the church, maybe only a few. And now they're confused because the pastor's so concerned about bringing the lost into the church that he's forgot how to take care of sheep. This is the when the pastor turns rancher, the sheep go moo syndrome. Because the pastor needs to be a shepherd of the sheep. These are the sheep. Instead of you're bringing everybody in and now you've got a pen, you've got a calf pen. And it stinks. It's horrible. So if you're not willing to take care of this now, get the fornication out, what happens is this sin comes in and we're going to read about what it does. I think you guys are catching this so far. You got any, any questions on this? All right, let me erase this. Go ahead, Bob. Verse 3. For as being absent in body, but being present in spirit, indeed, I have already judged the one who has worked out this thing. I've as already judged this. Well, oh, wait a minute, Paul. Matthew 7, 1 says, judge not, lest you be judged. That's the words of Jesus. Well, when, when are you guys going to stop playing games with the Bible? When? you got to read the Bible for what it says. Paul is saying... He, he's telling you how he's been judged, how he's being looked at. He's telling you how he's been treated. Yes, he's being judged. But he doesn't care. He wants to get the truth out. And so when the truth hits, see, now look what, look what happens here. If this guy is allowed to stay here, see the little blue boy? Mm -hmm. If the blue boy, the fornicator, the guy that's committed abominable sins that aren't even spoken of in the, in the heathen world, this is where the church can get. It can get so bad, this guy's sleeping with his father's wife is what's happening here. He's committing some, a, a heinous crime. It's just, it's, it's spiritually, you know, you know, it's an abomination unto God. And what the church wants to do is just love, love, love. Let's just love him. Remember the love and meekness thing? Who's my love and meek? We want to do this, but you need to come in with a rod. And Paul is saying, listen, pastors, you got to get this guy out of the church because what's happening is this guy is not going to be, he's not going to be taught anything why? Because you are under, now, now, here, now listen, listen to this, don't hear what I'm not saying. You are under as a, when the church is doing 
what it's supposed to do, what it's expected of by the Holy Spirit, by the Lord. They're true sheep in there. They're repenting, they're praying, they're fasting, they're living in holiness and sanctification, and it hasn't been flushed down the toilet yet. When the church is doing this, Paul is trying to tell the Corinthian church, listen, you guys are going down the drain. You're going down the drain quick. You need to make some decisions here. And so get this guy out of your church because when a church, the sheep, before they turn red, you catching this? Before the perversion gets in here, because if you let one guy do it, you got to let everyone else do it. If you're going to close your eyes to one, close your eyes to the rest. Now, if you are letting this happen, you're allowing this to take place, what happens is God will begin to allow this still to cover because of the sheep. So this guy is protected from Satan still while he's in the church. Satan can't touch him. Because he's still under the prayer covering of the church, what's expected of the church. The Holy Spirit is still in charge. The Lord is there. The foundation of the church has been firm. The foundation is still there. It is still a part of what the Holy Spirit desires. And when you bring people into a church that are all in court, one agreement, they will pray together, they will stay together. Connection brings protection. What's happening here is Paul is saying, you got to get this guy out of the church. you gotta, you got to make some decisions to make a move on this guy right here. Because if you don't, what's going to happen is it's going to pollute the entire church and the church can fall. And this is why in today's world, I'm running out of time, I'm getting waves from behind the camera there. <clears throat> oh, I want to cover so much more. But uh, looks like we're going to have to wait till next week. Friends, we've got to make some decisions in our church. Pastors, if the people that you're pastoring, that are underneath you, if they do not want to change, you got to boot them. Got to boot. I did it. Had to do it. Felt bad, but there's some good people that have gone haywire, and it's what it does is it causes sin to come in, and the leaven will 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 leaven the entire lump. Everybody gets infected. Everybody, instead of what Bob preached on last week, is bit by the Holy Ghost. You get infected by sin, and the sin comes in, and everyone says, "Well." Pastor allowed this to happen. Pastor allowed this to happen. So, you know what? If he's a hypocrite or he's a heretic, if he doesn't allow me to do this. I had a worship leader that was part of our church years ago who sent me a, a big, you know, how many pages of, you know, what it's like, you know, on how we should go out to the bar and bring in people that just because they're musicians and they, they're right, they're good musicians. And, you know, they might get saved because here's all the articles of these secret sensitive churches that they filled their they filled their choir, they filled the people with their musicians, with people from the world that they're they're not even living for Christ. They're on drugs, they're they're fornicating, they're doing whatever they want, uh, you know, living the way they want. But boy, you just might get them saved if they're up there worshiping for you. If they're playing an instrument for the worship team, they might get saved. You just don't know how God's got to operate. You know, that's, that's what split our church because I, I said enough is enough. I can't, I can't take that. We cannot stand for that. This is not me. <clears throat> and that's when we folded. We flushed because our church began to, this we was, was at a loss. We started losing this. And we had pressure to allow this to take place in our church. That's why Gateway Church is no more. Hallelujah. Yes. Now it's Holy Fire International yes. Church. You can check us out at holyfire, holyfireic.us. Check us out and uh, go to our website, heypastorwhereisgod.com. Uh, look at our, look at our uh, postings for all the videos that we're doing. Friends, we love you, and we want you to be saved. We want you to be healed, and we want you to remain in the flock. We want you to remain. And next week, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish off on this. <laughs> We've only covered a few verses here in uh, chapter 5, but that's all right. We're going we're gonna to continue next week. So hold on. Hang on. Don't get mad at me. And if you're mad at me, please forgive me, but I'm not going to change. Sorry. I've already been through it. I, already, I know what is apostate. I know what is, what is pleasing unto the Holy Spirit. And I'm a pastor. I'm a shepherd of my sheep, and I will protect the sheep in my church. You can see this, this, this shepherd who's got these nice teeth. Guess what? I get fangs when, when, when the devil shows up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to rip his head off and pour acid down his neck. And I, you, the only way you can do that, friends, is to bring this back again. To get people truly saved and bring the lordship of Jesus Christ into their hearts where they can feel comfortable coming to their pastor, they can feel comfortable coming to the congregation and sitting amongst people that really care for them and love them and will counsel with them and tell them the truth. 
and, and let them know, listen, if you got something like this going on in your life, you got something like this going on in your church, you need to deal with it. You keep ignoring it, it's going to just get bigger, and it's going to blow up on you, and then you're going to lose your whole church. But God's going to give you an opportunity. You can crash your church before that happens like we did and start all over again. And God will, God will honor you. I, I promise you. I'm going to pray for you. Stretch your hands. Father God, I just thank you for the YouTube viewers. I thank you for everybody in here. We've got a full house tonight. Lord, that we are seeing signs, wonders, and miracles. We're seeing a regeneration coming into the church of Jesus Christ. We're seeing the promise of the Holy Spirit being fulfilled. That in the last days, it's going to pour out His Spirit upon all men and all women. And you're going to do things, great and mighty deeds again, Lord. We're seeing what you have written in Mark chapter 16, all the way at the end, Lord, that we are going to lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. It's happening in Holy Fire International Church. It's happening on our program here at Hey Pastor, Where Is God? I thank you, Lord. I thank you for the friends. I thank you for those that are listening to this by YouTube. And Lord, we pray that they catch the fire. Let it just fall upon them as they're watching this right now in Jesus mighty name we thank you Lord you are an awesome God you're a mighty God and you love us you love us truly Lord but we need truth into our life we need to follow you if we truly love you one of the ways to follow and find if we are following and loving you is we will do what you say and this is what we desire Jesus we want to be underneath your Lordship not the Lordship of man in Jesus name everyone say amen, amen. amen. hallelujah we'll see you next week